Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's harvest video, it's really about tomatoes and peppers. They're finally ready, and I'm going to show you how to make a panko breadcrumb stuffing for peppers, and I will show you how to stuff the peppers and cook those. We're going to start, before we get to the tomatoes and peppers, uh, with taking out the rest of the beets back there, but we'll make a quick stop with the squash that we've been harvesting. And these are, again, really, really producing. I'm going to take all three of these. Nice small size, and remember, they just break off when they're this small. Well, that wasn't even in camera. Let's go over to these. And remember, let's do a do-over. They just break off when they're that small. Just lift them up, and they just snap right off. And we'll grab the last one in there. Just lift it up, and the tip breaks right off. So that's three quick squash. On that one plant, let's see what's over here. And these plants are doing really, really well still. There's a larger one that I missed. Wow, that's crazy looking. That one does look like a swan or a duck. Now, when they're smaller, they're a lot more tender, as I said in the other video, and they can be sliced up, used in salads. The bigger ones, sometimes I'll make a soup out of that, actually. While we're over here, let's grab some cucumbers. I do recommend grabbing the cucumbers when they're a little bit smaller. As we walk through the garden, especially with this high heat, they can get a little bit bitter, they yellow more quickly. Just take them when they're smaller. The seeds are going to be smaller, they're going to be sweeter, and you can see how the heat is just knocking this plant back. So I'm going to take out all the beets that are left in here. This whole space is going to be planted with my cool weather crops. I'm going to put in more beets. I'm going to put in peas actually right now. I'm going to put in carrots. There's one that's no good. Just a quick preview of everything I'm harvesting today. Big bowl of cherry tomatoes, hot peppers are in the bowl, sweet peppers right there, tons of cucumbers, squash, zucchini, and I pulled out a lot of beets. And the beets did really, really well this year. I mean, look at all those. Just add in a massive one right there. And then the last bead in this section, so I'm going to take these over to the shade because it is so hot that your beets, uh, cucumbers, anything that you're picking now will lose water and they'll actually get kind of soft and a you know rubbery because the heat will just pull the water out of them really, really quickly. Now the heat is really high. It's going to be 100 this week, 95 heat index over 100. My plants are going to get beat up. I just did a video planting. Um, squash, zucchini, and cucumbers, and actually the cucumbers have already germinated. I don't even think it's been four days. So your warm weather crops will come up real, uh, will come up quickly. So don't be afraid to give up on your plants that are beat up and just start planting more now. You have plenty of time. We're going to grab squash and zucchini as we work our way down before we get to the peppers and tomatoes. Two more squash in there. Light twist. And there's two more. Let's move down to the cucumber plant over here. And when it's this hot, don't be waiting for the perfect cucumber. Take them when they're small, like this. They're gonna be sweeter, they're gonna taste good. You just wanna make sure you have small seeds. Got another one. There's a larger one right back there. I'm gonna be making Cucumber and tomato salad today. Lots of cherry tomatoes are ready. Lots of peppers are ready. And it's just been a week. I'm even going to take this smaller one because it's weird on the end. Let's see. I thought I saw another one. There it is. Nice harvest of cucumbers. I see more on this side. Oh, I'll take that one. I mean, they grow really quickly. Like in two days, something that looked great and green could be changing color. There's another one. One more. Oh, my Lord. 
that's a perfect cucumber. Those are from three plants. Let me just double check. You don't want to leave any hanging on right now. I've also been removing all the leaves from the bottom. It's usually where diseases start coming up. Let's take this one too. So if you remove those leaves, they're not really functional anymore. It'll help the spread, it'll help keep the spread of disease from going up. And also those smaller insects have nothing to grab onto. This is a lemon cucumber. You harvest it about this size, tastes really, really good. It stays yellow. Here's a pickling cucumber. That's a little bit bigger than I would want. And with the heat, don't be afraid that something's necessarily wrong with your plant. They really get deformed in the heat. Pollination gets messed up. There's another one that's not looking right. Here's a couple more. All right, let's move down. Oh wait, let me show you these. So if you leave cucumbers on too long, they're gonna change color. Those are actually cucumbers. And I know you probably didn't know, but cucumbers will turn yellow, they will turn orange, and that's when the seeds get to size that's its whole goal, is to have mature seeds. Actually, if you just let your cucumbers get like this, you could take the seeds out, let them dry inside, and you'll have new cucumbers for the next year. While we're here, I'm gonna take these smaller squash. I'm gonna use them in salads. So we'll take those three. Let's see what else we have in here. There's a larger one. Now, I won't be eating all of these. Tuesdays are the harvest videos. Wednesdays, my wife takes big bags of the produce to people at work. Here's a beautiful green zucchini ready to come out. Let's see. Got another one right there. Actually two. We'll let that smaller one go for a bit longer. All right, let's see what else I can find. All right, well, let's keep rolling with the cucumbers and the squash. Here's one that I missed. This is the uh, scallop squash. Plants are still looking great. I'm really, really happy with how things are going. And I do harvest in between Tuesdays, too. So there's no more white scallop in one, there. Two. There's one in there that didn't get pollinated. We'll let that one grow. And you can see that I'm stripping the leaves away from the bottom. You can do that as practice too to help again manage with pests and disease. And birds and predatory insects can get in and find any kind of problems crawling around in there. All right, so I think that's it with the zucchinis. We have another cucumber plant over here. Actually, I have two more. Let's make this quick and get to those tomatoes and peppers. We have one, two, notice the shapes. It's the heat doing that. These are watered really well. Sometimes uneven waterings can do it. There's another one. And notice again, I'm clearing out all the leaves from the underside. The beans are all drying nicely on there. That'll be harvested later. There's a massive one. And this is the last cucumber section. And again, the heat's coming. This is a uh, market moor or straight eight. I've, uh, I've got them planted next to each other. It's smaller, but you really want to pick them when it's this hot. Cantaloupe looks good. That'll be in a future harvest video. There's one back there. The cucumber plant in here was supposed to be a bush variety and a small cucumber, but it's turned out to be something else. That's the risk that you get. I'm going to take that one. When you buy at like Home Depot or Lowe's, sometimes people move the tags for whatever reason. You end up with the wrong type of plant. All right, let's go to the cherry tomatoes. So I'm going to get a whole bowl of cherry tomatoes. I won't <laughs> pick all of those on camera. Those are just yellow grapes. I'm going to take all of those. These are Valentine. AAS winning tomatoes. I'm going to pick all of those. They're just beautiful and it's a really, really productive plant. But everything is going. So that's two kinds of cherries there. I have cherries right here. These are uh, sun sugar. 
beautiful. So I just want to show you, all this is coming out of the garden today. And then I have tomatoes. These aren't quite ready, but the plants are doing really well. Now, this is a plant that I haven't grown for a while. I wanted to give it a try again, and it's a pink ox heart. I like the way the tomatoes look. However, they just don't hold up to the heat. This is the only one that's getting pounded. Um, this is the only one that looks bad. So I'm going to put it down in my journal as not to grow it. Gave it a try again. You know, I'll get some nice tomatoes in a couple of days, but it just doesn't hold up when the heat gets into the middle 90s here in Maryland Zone 7. All right, let's get all these cherries picked and then we'll move on. So here's a super small tomato. This is called a red currant and they're really sweet. They're actually not even actually a tomato, but they function as one. Look how small they are. These are sugar lumps down there. They're gonna come off. Coming over here, the black cherry is one of my favorites. A couple in there ready to be pulled off. And here's another example. That is a Roma type tomato. That was supposed to be a Juliet. Again, I bought that in the store, and that is not a Juliet. That's way too big. That's some sort of plum tomato. And then there's a couple in there. I think that is, those are yellow. Let's see. That is a firefly. And the two down on the bottom there are ready to be picked. And this is a Patio Choice Yellow. It's another All America Selections winner. And it's dying back. That's normal. It's a determinate variety. So it's going to set all of its fruit pretty closely together. So I'm going to harvest all of these off of there. And it's a nice determinate variety for growing in containers. So this is my hot pepper section. We're just going to go with the cherry tomatoes at this harvest. Next week we'll do the uh, larger tomatoes. They're just starting to come in. So my hot pepper section, these are sr uh, sriracha peppers. Look like jalapenos and you just want to cut them off you know about that size let's see if i can do this left-handed so i'm going to cut three down there that's about the right size for the srirachas if you leave them on they're going to brown they get a little bit sweeter less hot these are um, santa fe peppers they're all hot peppers they're all going to come off i'm going to stuff all these different sizes is perfectly fine they will go from yellow to red Obviously, I should be holding the camera in the left hand. Those are Hungarian wax. I'm going to pick a bunch of those, too. Those are really hot, so be careful if you're stuffing those. And I think I have some jalapenos back here. These are pepperoncinis. Those are the ones you find a lot in jars next to the olives. They have to turn nice and yellow. Cayennes are green. They're going to turn red. And I do have the jalapenos are still a little bit small gonna let those go and then in here are different um, habaneros and there are actually too hot for me I give those away all right let's go to the sweet peppers here's some sweet peppers they're just getting up to size that's gonna turn color that's a Marconi they're gonna get a lot bigger lots of banana peppers in there that I'm gonna take I'm gonna stuff those Carnito Gallos are looking great. I want them to turn nice yellow. Some uh, Chocolate Beauties are going to be brown bell peppers. All right, let's go over to the sweet peppers that I'm ready to harvest. These are Cubanelles that I am going to pick. If you leave them on there, they will change color. There's about, I don't know, eight in there I'm going to take. Some banana peppers, they're ready to go. And I'm still waiting on the bell peppers to change color. I think that is a... California Wonder. That's pretty close, but I'm going to wait a little bit longer for that one. These are peppers in containers. More banana peppers. Massive size. Get to stuff those. Again, you can leave them on. They'll change color. Orange, red. Get a little bit sweeter. Go to harvest the poblano. That is delicious grilled, but it'll be really good stuffed. And you want to make sure, I'm mixing everything together, but I can tell the difference between the hot varieties and the sweet varieties. Just make sure you keep them in separate bowls because you don't want to surprise your wife or friends that if you are making stuffed peppers, you want them to get what they want and not be surprised by a hot pepper thinking it's a sweet banana. And these are Gypsy Sweet Peppers, another All America Selections winner. And you want them to really start turning color. That's perfect. I'll get in there and pick that. But I'm going to pick them why they're yellow because they're a great stuffing size and I really want to do a lot of the uh, panko stuffings of the different peppers today. 
So uh, let me pick these and then we'll get to the breadcrumbs. So we're gonna stuff peppers with breadcrumbs. The first thing you wanna do is just cut the tops off. Use a short knife. I don't know if it's called a paring knife or not, but something with a blade like that. And then you're just gonna core out the seeds. These are, that's a sweet pepper. Here's another sweet pepper. This is a Cubanelle. And you just move the knife gently around, pull out the seeds. You just wanna have a nice cavity for the panko breadcrumbs. This is the uh, Sriracha. These are a little bit harder sometimes, but just take your time. If you're doing hot peppers and sweet peppers, do the sweet peppers first. In case you have people that can't take any kind of heat, you sort of don't cont contaminate the stuff. And then, there you go. You can get the knife in really far and just spin it. That will core it out nicely. So they're ready for stuffing. Now, again, I kind of cook like I garden. There's nothing exact. So this is eight ounces of panko breadcrumbs. You want the panko, they all get to stay nice and crisp. So we're gonna put in about four ounces. That's half a can. And that's a base. So obviously if you're doing, uh, this will probably do 10 to 12 peppers. If you're doing more, you're gonna need more, but this is just the basic amount. I like Parmesan cheese. About a handful. Now my hands are clean, my nails are not. So that's just how it is. Pinch of salt. If you like garlic, you can put in some garlic powder, half a teaspoon, teaspoon of pepper, a little more pepper. Mix it all in. And that just makes a great basic stuffing. If you have garlic, you can mince them up. Fresh garlic is better. Now, once it's mixed, you're going to add in, I don't know, two tablespoons, maybe a little more, a little less, of olive oil, and you're going to mix it through. And really moisten all the breadcrumbs, all the dry ingredients with the oil. This oil will heat up, will crisp up, it'll melt the cheese. It's delicious. I could actually just eat this. It's, it's that good. If you wanted, you could melt a tablespoon of butter and then put some butter in there. If you don't mind the calories. So the stuffing you do with your hand, obviously the bigger peppers are a lot easier. Just fill them in, press them in with your finger, and really push them in there. That sets up, I think that was the gypsy pepper. This is the cubanelle. The bigger the cavity, the lot easier it is to stuff in there. I'll show you a trick if you have a skinnier pepper in a second. So that one's good to go. This one is gonna be a little bit harder. This is basically, I like using jalapenos. They weren't ready yet. This one will suffice. Fill it in and then use the back end of a wooden spoon and press it in. That'll stuff that pepper. And then here's a cubanelle I did earlier. It's a fairly large cavity. But again, you're going to need the wooden spoon. And just put pressure in slowly. If you push too hard, you might poke out the other side of the pepper. All right, so that's four peppers. So four ounces of panko, it's gonna get you about eight to 10 peppers. All right, let me stuff the rest and then we'll get to putting them in the oven. It's gonna set the oven at 375, preheat it. All right, so I used 12 ounces of panko. Just want to be clear, it's the plain panko breadcrumbs. Season it how you like. These are all the sweet peppers. It took about 12 ounces of the panko breadcrumbs, and these are the hot peppers, different varieties. About 12 ounces of panko to stuff all of those peppers. So the oven's set to 375. I need my towel real quick. And we're going to bake this about 30 minutes, check on them in 20 minutes. You want the 
peppers to soften up and you'll know that it's working, you'll hear it sizzling. So about 30 minutes at 375, then we're going to finish it up with a broil. So here are the peppers at the 25 minute mark. Make sure at 375 you check them at 20 minutes because you don't want them to burn. They're already nice and crisp. I'm not going to do the three minute broil. I just want to make sure I don't burn myself here. Sweet peppers. And the hot peppers. Now just let them cool. Uh, maybe some sour cream even ranch. You could put more cheese on top if you want to. But this is a basic way that I use pancos with stuffed peppers. I even use this basic panko recipe on tomatoes, um, other vegetables. It's absolutely delicious. I hope you give it a try. You will really, really like it. All right, well, that's the end of the video. I'll be doing harvest videos every Tuesday. Give the panko stuffed peppers a try. They're absolutely delicious. And you can use that stuffing too um, with the larger tomatoes. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and I hope you have a great harvest this week.